Hey guys, it's James here with another face chart video. So for this tutorial, I'm using the MyKitco face chart as always. Um, so these are available in the MyKitco website, printed on um, unique textured paper, which really holds makeup. They come in packs of 15 and 30. And I've already prepped the skin on this face chart. So if you want to check out how I do my skin, there's a couple of videos um, which I go through step by step. But this um, face chart was all inspired by a shoot I recently did with the amazing Tina Eason. Um, and it was kind of like neon geisha inspired. So um, I'm using a few different um, products today. I'm using the Hydra FX from Suba Beauty, which gives a really great neon color. This one shade is fanny pack and scrunchy. And then I'm using a green shadow to accent that. Some bright blush. So this is all about kind of having big graphic moments on your Face. So it's quite nice to, um, I've actually done this from reverse. Normally I'll do a face chart and then do the makeup, but this time I've done the makeup and now I'm doing the face chart to match it. So I'm gonna talk you through my step-by-step. -step. So as I said before, the skin's already done. And so I um, achieved that with a couple of textures of powder foundation, a couple of shades of powder foundation. I wanted to go for quite rich tones. So I think this one's an NC43 and the C5. And I've been using my um, a low pad just to puff push all of the um, product into the face chart and then I was using neutral eye shadows just to give me all of the areas of shadow so something like this is always really useful and then I've been using a synthetic brush just to shade the face and the contours but again you know if you want to do learn more about skin check out my skin video so first of all, we're gonna start with the eye. So whenever I'm doing a bold eye look, I always like to go in with um, all of the neutrals first to give me the shape. So I've just taken some of this Super Beauty and I've wet it a little bit. It is water-based, so you do need to activate it with a little bit of water. So I've just give this a spritz on my palette. Now I'm using a My Kitco 123 brush, which is a quite a firm synthetic brush. And I'm just gonna mix up a nice texture in that. And when I was planning the shoot with Tina, I wanted to kind of work with quite clashing colours really. I didn't want to go down the classic kind of geisha makeup look, you know, pale skin, red lip. I wanted it to feel much more modern. And so there's something I really liked about the idea of a green and a crazy hot pink together. Okay, application wise, I can be quite painterly with this because we've already got all of our base on. You know, I can apply it almost like painterly in certain areas so and yes this is a cream color so it does dry down obviously it's water activated so I'm going to get a little bit of playtime but not too much so I need to basically get all of my blending in before it starts to dry out but I am, be, I am able to get a bit of a fade as well But what I like about this is the colour intensity, the payoff is really strong. So obviously where I don't have any colour on the lid, you're going to get much more of a clean green. But then where I do have some of the neutral eyeshadow, obviously it's going to look a little bit more um, almost dirty, but I kind of like that because it gives it shade. Same concept underneath. So for the actual beauty shoe, I just I created the shape. It wasn't quite square and it wasn't quite winged. It was somewhere in between the two. It's kind of quick and easy. So it's a little spritz again, just to activate the um, green, and mix it around. So that's why I like these little play palettes from my kit code because they've got small wells. So you can keep your colors separate if you're you know, working with the multiple shades. So the initial blend one, when the brush is wet, is when I'm gonna get the most shape from my paint. So I know I can paint that on really quickly. And then as it starts to dry down a little bit, Obviously, it's going to be a bit more difficult to blend. And I like all of that texture that's happening naturally 
you know, as the paint dries, I just think it makes the image look much more 3D. And stand off the face a little bit more. It doesn't have to be super smooth. If it was super smooth, it would almost look a bit too flat. And tape underneath. So this could be something that you try out, you know, to create a completely neutral face chart. And then just have a look at a little bit of in inspo. Maybe you want to um, show that close up. Perhaps you want to recreate a look that you've done yourself. You know, go back into your archives and just see perhaps a makeup look that you really love, that you want to bring to life on a face chart. Okay, so I'm going to pop that brush to the side for a second. And I'm going to switch over to my matte green eyeshadow. I'm going to take a little firm synthetic brush. And I'm just going to shade in little areas just to bring that depth back. So obviously a bright green would still have areas of depth in it where, you know, the contours of the eye lay. So I'm just going to go back over. And a little bit, this looks a little bit more successful than doing it in like a black because it keeps the colour family together. But I don't want to take too much away from that amazing neon green. Because actually the beauty shot that we did was all about a crazy bold colour. So I've just smoked out certain areas and just kind of exaggerated the texture a little bit. Okay, so now onto the lip. So I have another super beauty shade. This one's scrunchy, a nice day glow pink. I've already wet my um, palette with it, so I know it's ready to go. Um, pink and green, quite an interesting combo. Let's see how it works. So I already had done a um, neon lip video which had much more of a clean eye. So it'd be quite interesting to see how it turns out. This super green eye as well. So this is like a paint texture now that I've wet it a little bit. So I know instantly that it will blend nicely on the page. Because I use it for my previous video as well. I know the kind of payoff that you get. So I've exaggerated the lip line, I've gone right over the top of the lip line. Now for the shoot, the lip was a very matte. So what I'm gonna do is fill in, I'm not gonna leave any white spaces because usually the white space makes it either look kind of creamy or glossy. But for this look, it was all about a velvet matte lip, which means that I need to fill in the color. So it's quite intense. Still having a little bit more depth around the edge of the lip because that would be give it gives it like a natural contour shape um, shape. Love those two colours together. So now we have to give it definition. It's all one note at the moment, so it's lacking that um, depth of colour. So for that, what I'm going to do is just dip in with a lip liner. So this is. Um, a slightly deeper tone of lip line and I'm just going to edge the outer corner of the mouth. It's like a deep rose tone. Again, the same kind of thing that we did with the lip, um, sorry, the green, dark green eyeshadow through the eyes. It's just kind of to give a shadowed version of your base color. Now let me see if that wants to blend. We might have to give it a little bit of extra love because it's probably quite dry. If I push with the brush, it does start to move. And this is just again to give you that depth in certain areas. So it's makes sense that the outer edge of the mouth would be darker, naturally. And then through the centre of the lip as well, we're 
definitely be darker. So just that away. So it's all just about blurring those lines, giving the idea of kind of depth. Let's try a little pigment over the top of that one if we've got. Let's try this peaches pigment. It's quite a bright pink. So this is peaches cosmetics. It's quite a blue pink though, so it might work. Let's see. Maybe not. I think because the base was pretty dry, the pigment had nothing to grab to. So I think what I'll do is persevere with the lip liner and actually no I'm gonna use a little bit of this pink blush so a hot pink blush could use a hot pink eyeshadow I guess would work with, would work well as well and this is just to shadow certain areas in try not to take the brightness out of that neon I like to sharpen everything up now with my black art pen just to bring those lines back and make them crisp. Okay. So I guess the key thing is you've probably seen that I've worked on this face shot, I worked pretty quickly. Um, and you know, sometimes when it's painterly, if you overthink it too much, then it always looks a little bit too basic, like it's a bit too thought out. So, you know, because the eye was quite painterly, I wanted to just get it on there and just see what the color looks like. Now I can go back in and add details like lashes, and but I love all of the little details that we've left where the paint dried in certain ways. Also great, you know, if you've done a ton of face charts, you can almost rework them, like take a neutral face chart and just give it new eyeshadow, a new lip, however you want to play it. So, you know, I often do that if I don't have time to do the skin and everything again, I'll just go back in and go over an old face chart and just give it a little new, give it a facelift basically. I'm adding a few lashes just to give the eyes more texture. Again, there's a full lash video where I explain lash direction and my favorite tools and all of that. And they're all on my IGTV, so check them out. Lower lashes just to finish here. And I was thinking about doing a blush, but I honestly think now we have the lip and the eye together, I don't feel like there needs to be any more colour on the face. It might start to get a little bit overkill. So we're going to leave the face chart just like that. So that was a, a chart inspired by a makeup that I did um, for a recent shoot for Lucy's Magazine using really simple products, two shades of Super Beauty, and a lip liner, and a deeper pink as well. So I hope you enjoyed it guys, that's a quick one today. Um, stay safe, stay well, and I'll catch up with you really soon. Bye.